I'm going to be doing this video into two parts because compression is not something to be taken lightly. I want to cover the appropriate information. So the first video will be explaining what compression is to give you a better understanding and what it does. And the second video will actually be using the compressor and explaining what's actually happening. So to better understand compression, we should first understand what it is, why we use it, and when we use it. Compression in simplest terms reduces dynamic range. The dynamic range is the difference between the loudest parts of a sound and the quietest parts of the sound. And by reducing the dynamic range of something, you can increase the overall volume of the sound, but in turn, it can make it sound less exciting and less organic. The most common form of compression and what people are generally referring to when talking about compression is downwards compression. This works by reducing the signal of the loudest parts and also by increasing the quieter parts of a sound, resulting in an overall average volume that is less dynamic. Then we can turn the entire volume of that sound up to compensate for the volume that we have reduced. This makes the entire sound perceived as louder and can help it punch to the mix. So here's an example of an uncompressed shaker loop. Without the compression, the open hat is much louder than the shakers, but in the compressed version, the shakers are louder and the open hat is quieter. With the compressor off, we can hear that the open hat punches through much harder than when the compressor is turned on. So when the compressor is on, it's actually reducing a little bit of the volume of the open hat. And now we can turn the entire sample or sound up because we can compensate for that reduced volume. And by turning it all the, all the instrument back up, now we have the quieter parts of the sound louder, while the loudest parts of the sound have been slightly reduced so that they can become closer together. We want to be using the compressor for a couple of main reasons. To reduce or eliminate peaks, to reduce dynamic range, and to shape our transients. This is just one of the many reasons that we can use compression on a sound. Now that you have a basic understanding of what compression is, you can check out the next video which will explain the settings and I'll provide some more examples.